my name is Eric Mubar. I got a BS in physics from Appalachian State University in 2005. Does anybody know where that is? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Boom. Boom. Yeah. yeah. Go Mount Michigan. I got an MS, uh, <laughs> Master's in Physics from Clemson in 2007, and then my PhD in 2009. My, go Tigers. <laughs> my dad called me the other day and asked who I rooted for in the Clemson Appalachian State game. I was like, I think they play. <laughs> I didn't follow the athletic teams. Clearly. My dissertation was on chemical tagging of the Wolf 630 moving group. This is actually an astrophysics topic. So technically, I'm a rocket scientist. I'm smarter than Britain. Uh, I'm the assistant professor of physics at Marymount. I've been here since 2011, and they keep me around. Probably because I do lots of fun activities, blow stuff up, and throw things around. I'm the science monkey here. So how did I get to where I am and what I'm going to present for you up here? Uh, I have lots of things up here in my hand. How do I go from astrophysics to a hand? So I came here to do computational astrophysics, and I'm faced with students that are pre-meds, philosophers, fashion designers. Can you imagine doing computational astrophysics, maybe with pre-meds, but philosopher, fashion designer? I got like two or three student research, every, research students every year. I, I wanted to aim higher. I, do a presentation for students, try to recruit them to do research with me. These are kind of the faces that I get. <laughs> Either they're like, what? What? Or just play terrified on me. <laughs> so I kind of had to think, what can I do? How can I switch topics? How can I attract more students? So along came this video. Star Wars. And I saw this story about a kid that got a Star Wars arm. 
So they built him this arm on a 3D printer um, to, to mimic Star Wars. So I started looking more into this, finding out, how are these people doing this 3D printing? How many of you have seen articles about it? The kids that get 3D printed hands? And it kind of just says, this kid got a 3D printed hand that was really cheap, and anybody with a 3D printer can do it. Okay, maybe I can do it. So I started looking more into it, and I found this group called Enable the Future. Anybody heard of them? Write them down, you don't want to know about them. This is a group that has designed a prosthetic hand that's almost entirely 3D printable, has 31 pieces that you print, and then about $30 worth of hardware and shipping to deliver a hand to a child that doesn't have one free of charge. So project ideas, things that you could use these hands for in your classroom. You can print a hand, have the kids assemble it. Have kids redesign a hand. If you look at this one I have, I have several little examples. So I printed these in my research lab on a 3D printer. I had students print some of these on the 3D printer. It works with their wrist motion as long as a kid can bend their wrist, they can bend their wrist and the hand will close. You can have students do design changes. So I had one student, they actually uh, took this finger, took the 3D file, um, designed a hole that you could drill into this, and you can stick a stylus down in here so then it works with the touch screen. Okay? Students come up with these ideas themselves. I had another student who wanted to robotify the hand, make it robotic. So this is where little bits came into the play. He's a physical therapy major, doesn't know anything about computer programming. We bought, him, we bought these uh, little bits of electronics kits. So we'll talk more about what those are. Go ahead, let's see if we can amaze you first. Okay. So we got these kits. He took these little electronics pieces, and within about a day, he'd taken his hand, 3D printed hand, hook it up to a little motor, and we can get a hand that kind of closes. Not bad for like a day's worth of work from somebody that knows nothing about computer programming or electronics. Okay. Very, very cool projects that we can do with these hands. So, uh, what kind of things can you do? What can help? What, what can help you get involved in this? Where do you get 3D models to print? There's a site called Thingiverse. This is a repository of free 3D files that people have designed, and anybody can download and print them. Uh, people's designs. If you can't design yourself, someone else has probably designed whatever you want. Anything that I want to find on there, I can find. Want a little miniature Yoda? Yeah, there's like a dozen of them on there. Okay, you can take part in design challenges. Periodically they have uh, Mars habitats. Design a 3D printable Mars habitat for NASA to use. Right now they have an assistive technology challenge where you can help design maybe things to make writing easier for kids that don't have full function of their fingers. All sorts of interesting project ideas on this site called Thingiverse. How can you get involved in putting models on Thingiverse? How can you actually use this stuff? Uh, well, you need a 3D printer. 3D printers, uh, I was surprised at how inexpensive they are, actually. The ones I use to print everything on this table, maybe not inexpensive, but $3.99 for a 3D printer. You can get one of the printers I used for printing these things through an ambassador program at, uh, through printerbot.com for $399. Yeah. Not cheap. But not a ton of money. There are grant resources uh, out there to help you get that kind of money. Normal price for one of these is about $600. Uh, the plastic that I use, print everything on that table for plast, um, for about $20 worth of plastic. Okay. Actually, you could probably print about four times what's on that table. Uh, the software you can use to design. How did my student drill a hole into the finger? Did they need to buy a $1,000 CAD program? No. They went on the web to this website called Tinkercad free open source software. Anybody can use this, anybody can use this to design 3D printable objects. I'll show you how easy this is. This is amazing. Welcome to Tinkercad, a 3D design tool that runs in your browser. This tutorial video will teach you the basics of using Tinkercad. What makes Tinkercad unique is the focus on constant learning. You can create something from scratch. Follow a quest that teaches you new skills. Or find a thing someone else has designed that you want to study and perhaps modify. To start a new design, click the Design a New Thing button. This is the editor. The arrows on the left are part of the view controls. On the right, there are basic shapes you can use for your design. 
You can create things by dragging shapes to the work plane. To move the view to another angle, click the arrow buttons. You can also press and hold the right mouse button down while moving the mouse. Zoom the view by pressing the plus and minus buttons, or by using the mouse scroll wheel. You can freely move shapes along the work plane. Use the top handle to change the height of the shape. And use the corner handles to change its size along the work plane. Use the arrows to rotate the shape. Move the shape up and down by using the arrow handle on top of the shape. If you select several shapes, you can modify them simultaneously. Select multiple shapes with box select, or by holding the shift key down and clicking on the shapes you want to select. As you can see, all the selected shapes move along with the work plane. To build upwards, you can place the work plane on any surface of the model, like this. This is a boat we are building. The next thing we need to add is a cabin, and then smokestacks on the top. I'll drag the work plane on top of the cabin to build the smokestacks. If you press and hold the shift button while scaling, Tinkercad will resize the shape equally in all directions. Use copy and paste to duplicate shapes. Now I want to add some decoration. First I'll place the work plane on the side of the cabin, and then I'll drag a star onto it. To better see how the star fits on the cabin, I'll reset the work plane by dropping it on the ground. You can use any shape to make holes. Just select the shape and press the hole button in the toolbar. It's a good idea to group related shapes together to make further editing easier. You can always ungroup shapes later. There it is! Our boat is ready! When you're done with designing, click Save and Close. After that, you can give a name to your new thing. Your design is now ready to be 3D printed or shared with friends. Design a new thing of your own and have a great time learning at Tinkercad.com. Okay, so how long did it take to go from nothing on this platform to a boat? Three and a half minutes to design a boat. And this really is that easy to use. Uh, I have students in a Discover course here at Marymount. It's where we introduce them to college. The particular course I teach is called Movie Science. So we watch movies and talk about the science of those movies. One of the movies we watch is uh, October Sky. Has anybody seen that? What is that one about? Building rockets. Building rockets. So I have my students use Tinkercad. They watch maybe a 20 minute tutorial. And then I say, go, build a rocket. Build a design of anything you want, anything you can think of, and I will print them out. So what we'll do is I will pass these around, all the different rocket designs that students have come up with. Sometimes they work. Yeah, nice little stars, nice little design. This is all student design, no input for me. Sometimes they're a bit ambitious, and they design something bigger than can fit on my printer. Sometimes they don't work. Sometimes... They, they get really creative, and they designed this to actually screw into something. So you can see threads on here, so this would screw into it, but nose cone. Sometimes, they really don't understand aerodynamics. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes, they print something that looks really, really cool. This one looks, looks really, really interesting. And then you turn it around, and you see how printed, oh, they left a hole in there. Okay? So this is a great way for students to learn. These, all these rockets, I printed them uh, actually right before I came here, about two hours before I got here. Okay. So we'll pass these around, you can take a look, play with them, launch them at your neighbor. <laughs> so, 3D design software. You can use this in your classrooms if you don't have a printer. They can still design things. You can send these away to places that have 3D printers, you can pay a small fee for that. Or you can talk to somebody that you know that has a 3D printer. How many of you know somebody that has a 3D printer? 
Everybody raise your hands. You know me. I have four 3D printers. I can put students to work on printing your objects for you. Okay. Do you remember how many research students I told you I had with astrophysics? Two to three. How many do you think I have now? About 35 class now. And that's just from my classes. I've opened it up to more faculty, and the emails are piling on. Oh boy, don't know what I'm going to do with myself. So, uh, I really interested in the 3D printed hands, and we can do those. We design these, we print these out. We want another bigger challenge. We want to robotify the hand. We want to make it robotic very easily, though, so that anybody can do it. This is where these things called little bits come into play. Little bits. Uh, they're easy to use electronics prototyping. Okay? In theory, they're all color coded, they're all magnetic so that there's no wrong way you can connect things. Connect things. You spend a lot less time confused about how to hook up a circuit and more time just tinkering, just playing. Okay? Learning by playing. Like I said, they're color coded. Every single little bit that you get, every single little electronic piece is a specific color. Anything that's blue is a power output. Anything that's green is an actual output that actually does something. Anything that's pink is going to be an input. These are going to be things like buttons. And then anything that's orange is going to be wires to allow you to connect more, more circuits to your, to your little bits. Uh, I have a sample of a whole bunch of different kits, and I think we'll have time to get people into groups so you can play with them. Uh, basic idea, again, blue gives power, green is an output makes the circuit actually do something. You have DC motors, you have servo motors, you have little force sensors, you have all sorts of different speakers that you can do. Tons of little bits that you can use. Uh, pink is an input that lets you restrict or control your output. So you can have a button, you can have a little uh, toggle switch that lets you control the power output that you're getting. Um, and then orange is wires to connect more little pieces to your circuits. And the greatest part about these things is they're all magnetic. So there's no wrong way to connect things. Let's say I want to make a circuit. Here I have a circuit. I want to connect my battery to a little button, and I want to connect it to my motor so that my motors will turn. Right? Well, let's say I don't want the button. I want to just connect it straight to the wire. If I try to connect it the wrong way, it won't work. The magnets are set up to repel. So the only way I can connect it, and then I get my power. I can turn off the power, but I don't get any power anymore. If I want to control the power with a switch, I have a little button. I can put the little button. If I try to connect this the wrong way, again, the magnetic magnets will repel. You can't hook it up the wrong way. Magnetic connection. Magnetic connection again. Turn on my power. Well, didn't do anything. Hit the button, and then I can get the power. Right now, the, the motors are maxed out. So I can reverse their direction. <coughs> Very easy. Like I said, it took my student who knew nothing about electronics a day to get all that figured out. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. You said that the 3D printer you can get in as cheap as $3.99, but the material, mm -hmm. how much is that? The plastic? Yeah. One spool of plastic is about $20. I got everything, actually, I ordered everything on Amazon. The $3.99 price <laughs> is a special price only for school teachers. This is what I like about this printer bot company. They want to get a 3D printer to every school. So you actually have to, you, you write them, there's a process on their website. There's a web link that I provide in this, in this presentation uh, that will show you how to go and sign up as a printer bot ambassador, and they will sell you this printer for $3.99. Yeah. Yes? Um, are the little bits, are they a kit that you use, Bridges, or can you buy like separate? You can buy individual ones, you can buy kits. Uh, there's, there's, I forget what the exact number is. Uh, I, I'll have it at the end. Uh, but the prices all vary. Maybe five dollars for each bit. Um, this kit that I got was actually a big workshop kit. It was about two thousand dollars, but it includes enough bits for like sixteen students to all have their own little kit. So you you can do it a lot less expensive. Tinkercad is that only for Mac? Tinkercad, it's all through a web browser, so it's Mac or PC. And another question, I've seen only one 3D printer once, and it was, it was like 
tiny area, how big can you make it? Uh, the particular one I use for this is six inches by six inches by six inches. So it's about. Right, probably why it's so I get bigger ones. There are bigger ones. Those are going to be a lot more expensive. Yeah, yeah. yeah I try to keep the cost down. We've got one inch about tall. Okay, yeah. How easy is it to use? That's that's the other thing I like about the printers that I use. It's all open. It's not boxed in. So if something breaks, you can actually see what broke and you can fix it. You can fix it very inexpensively. I had a student, this was when I was first letting students use the printers that didn't have any rules in place <laughs> that I probably should have. They left the printer printing overnight. Oh. It started shaking, rattling around a little bit. Table was about this tall. I came in the next morning, it wasn't on the table. Oh. It fell down. The only thing that broke was a little rubber band piece on it. It was about $2 to fix to buy the little rubber band and I replaced it myself. And now it's printing up. So they're, they're pretty low maintenance and easy to maintain. I maintain and pass the idiot proof. I can work it, anybody can. <laughs> Any other questions before I make you play yourselves? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so you, you have some um, astrophysics class research that you do. Yes. Right? And then what are the other courses that you teach? The... I teach a physics class, I teach an astronomy class, and I, I teach a physical science class, and then a freshman seminar. Um, are there um, like lesson plans slash you know curriculum type of? Uh, That's a great question. That can uh, integrate these into like a physics class or something in high school. Yeah. So PrinterBot has a host. Uh, PrinterBot Learn. It's a website where they host a bunch of curriculum materials for how other people are using 3D printing. So my lesson plan for 3D printing rockets is on that site. Uh -huh. There are other other uh, lesson plans that people have posted. Um, for the 3D printed hands, there's a whole uh, Google group. It's actually a group of 6,000 volunteers, a bit like herding cats to get people to do anything. Everything's hosted through Google Sites. So there's a Google site that you can join and get access to a ton of curriculum materials for how people have used 3D printed hands in their classes. Um, how to use, uh, how to kind of scaffold it up. So first start with building a 3D printed hand with uh, just straws just regular materials that you find around the house to learn how the hand works, then start printing the hands, start printing additions to the hands. So uh, I'll have, there are links at the end of my presentation that so you can just go and click on it instead of having to write it down. I hate writing down links, I never get to write. Yeah, his presentation will be on the lab bench. He's already sent me the link for it, so I can actually Are all these plastics recyclable, or what do you do with so much stuff that you do? Plastics recyclable? Yeah. Um, there are different options that you can do with the different plastics. Uh, we use PLA, and actually we are starting to use them in our chemistry labs. So they can take the chemistry, they can um, take the PLA, stands for polylactic acid, and they can break it down into its components, and they can actually use it to create a, a household cleaner. So we integrate it into chemistry labs. Yes. I was just wondering if you found any use for the um, 3D printing pens. Have you seen those? I have seen those. I, I have I have experimented with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering. I'm blowing all my budget on the printers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's get you into groups. Uh, I have no idea how many people are in here. I can't count, even though I'm a physicist. Let's get you into. I need four different groups. I have enough kits for four groups. Go so back. Seven or eight people per group. Mm -hmm. Turn the tables around. But I'm being told my time is about up. So I want to wrap things up. See, this, see how great this is for your students? They won't want to leave. Okay. So I promised you links to all these websites. So at the end of this presentation, there's a link to Little Bits. You have a variety of different options. There's a 50% educator discount. A kit is about $100 or so. Uh, I'll, I'll bring up the site to show you more options. The printer about metal symbol, the printer that I use to print these hands, and to print the, the you see the little wheels that are okay. that you have? I 3D printed those. Okay. So you can print pieces to go with your little ones. Yeah. Very, very awesome. That 3D printer, you can get one of those through Printerbot for $399. They're offering that to any school. 
And then if you want additional ones, they'll charge you those for the price of, it's actually $5.99. Okay, and the plastic that you use, about $20 for a spool through Amazon. Are we going to be able to get this? Is this going to be put online for us to get access to it? Yeah, yeah. This is all online, so you can click these links. Just mm -hmm. click them instead of writing them all down. Printer about lots of plans, all right at this site. Tinkercad, there's the website, tinkercad.com. Can't be any easier. Thinkiverse, thinkiverse.com, that's pretty easy. If you get a 3D printer and want to print hands, want to use it in your lessons, enable the future. Okay? Everybody should be able to get a business card on a little bag that I sent out. You can have my business card, you have my email. What are all these sites going to take you to? This is the Enable the Future site. This is their E3 STEAM Educators Exchange. So they just launched this in August to try to get teachers involved in this. There are curriculum materials up here. STEAM, I guess that's a new big thing. Science, technology, arts, arts, engineering, arts, and then I just trying to I've started taking art professors and putting them on my grants just so I can get money. STEAM. <laughs> We have the Enable the Future, the actual site. These are all kids that have gotten hands, maybe hands that we printed on campus. That you could print on campus too. Great for getting students involved and stuff. Uh, lesson plans for 3D printing. There you go. Introducing a 3D printer, flight design, designing community center, all sorts of different things. Print your school. Print your school. Lots of different printer options. Again, the one I use, they're most popular, $5.99 normally. You can get it at the ambassador rate of $3.99. Okay. okay. I, I don't know the specifics, but I assume you could probably use like donors choose to get a 3D printer. People will give you money for that kind of thing. Uh, little bits. Here's our little bits. Here's their website. If you want to pick different bits, you can go to shop and find kits that are designed for educators. So they have a student set. Let's see what's in the student set, shall we? Two hundred seventy-four dollars. So he got a thousand dollars. One base kit, one premium kit. The little bits are pricey. I got the workshop set. Oh, the workshop. Two thousand dollars. It gets expensive. Yeah. But you do get a discount, and they do have. Um, You're getting a discount. Uh, let's see if I can find it on here. They have educator guides, they have curriculum materials. They have curriculum materials designed to meet different standards of learning for different school districts. So they do have some customized curriculum materials. Yeah. Do me a favor and toss the bits back into the bag.